Gold prices made persistent gains during 2019 as the effects of ongoing U.S.-China trade tensions took a mounting toll on the global economy. Whilst the U.S.-China trade deal has clearly affected the precious metals sector, volatility brought on by Brexit tensions, Hong Kong protests, the ending of the Iran nuclear pact, and the drone attack on Saudi oil fields all helped the yellow metal rally in the latter half of the year. After gold corrected, it went down to about 1060 around mid-2016. Today it breached the 1560 mark. That's a 50% increase in price over about 3.5 years. Pretty good for a zero to the low risk instrument. The downside of all of that is that the US dollar has depreciated in tandem. So will gold prices reach new highs in 2020? What awaits us on the gold market in 2020? And what are the opinions of the most important sector analysts on the price prospects for the coming year? I bet gold is going to hit just shy of $2,020 in US dollars in 2020. QE4 is a crazy third world dollar debasement and is just getting started. Plus, you'll see even more central banks buying gold, but at some point, they'll put in a panic bid as global gold availability gets tight. Tick tock. The end game has started. Understand that you won't get rich owning gold. You will avoid becoming poor. One ounce of gold still buys the same number of hot dogs in 2020 that it did in 1920. Gold doesn't go up. Fiat goes down. Keep your savings in gold. Pretty simple, really. A $1,913 is worth 3 cents now, and they're printing money as fast as they can. Billions, soon to be trillions, are numbers nobody can comprehend but looks like the dollar is going to be even more worthless very soon, and that's hard to picture, but it's also a lot of room for gold to grow, and silver more so. Physical precious metals are the only insurance against banksters worldwide. The conditions are perfect for a gold price rally. If you're paying attention to global debt at all levels, and the kinetic friction occurring between nation states and geographically important areas you should be buying gold and silver hand over fist. You should be terrified of the unknown future because this trend is no friend of the common man. This is the sad stuff history written about. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Ray Dalio says cash is trash, investors should diversify portfolio with gold. Adding that gold will be a top asset to own in the years ahead as central banks will fail to normalize in the next downturn, which could have already started. Gold is an insurance policy, as the dollar will continue to go down in value as it is printed, and it will end in a monetary calamity. Gold is not money due to any man-made laws. Gold is money despite man-made laws and is a product of the voluntary marketplace. Gold prices rose 15% this year, helped by rising global debt, geopolitical turmoil, and fears of an imminent economic collapse. In the middle of the year, uncertainty about the US-China trade war pushed the yellow metal above the $1,400 per ounce threshold. In September, gold also crossed the $1,500 mark, reaching a five-year high $1,553. Currently, the prices are around $1,550. But what will happen during the rest of 2020? Will precious metal expand the 2019 earnings? 2019 was a two-sided year. As mentioned, in 2019, gold prices moved slowly in the first six months, and then decidedly increased starting from the summer months, mainly thanks to the trade tensions between the United States and China that had a growing impact on the global economy. But tensions over Brexit, Hong Kong protests, the end of the Iranian nuclear deal, and the drone attack on Saudi oil fields also helped the yellow metal rally in the last half of 2019. Some analysts had expected gold to be weak in the first half of 2019 and strengthen in the second half. The price followed this pattern, but started to rise earlier and rose faster than expected. Another decisive factor was the cut in U.S. Federal Reserve interest rates three times in the second half of 2019. In addition, central banks have purchased large quantities of precious metal. Russia, China, Poland, Serbia, Colombia, and Brazil, just to mention a few cases, have increased their gold reserves. Gold ETFs also benefited from increased interest in the yellow metal, with new purchases reaching a record high in August. $6 billion, according to the World Gold Council. Trends and forecasts for 2020. For the year ahead, analysts' opinions are quite varied. 
What everyone agrees on is that the US presidential election November 2020 will play a key role in global geopolitical relations and markets. Forecasts say that the main central banks Fed, ECB, and BOJ will maintain an accommodative monetary policy over the next year, which is expected to support gold prices. In the short term, many analysts are optimistic, and someone thinks that gold is in the early stages of a massive revaluation, which could bring prices even over $2,000. For asset management Switzerland, the yellow metal could be worth between $2,000 and $2,200 within a year or two. For the year 2020, analysts are mixed on what investors can expect from the gold market and the precious metals sector as a whole. For example, Peter Schiff says, gold price is going through the roof beyond $2,000. And from his side, Rick Rule of Sprott wants investors to remember that it's a marathon, not a race, and keeping pace in a bull market is more important than leading the pack. If you have a cycle where the index has moved 200 to 1,200 percent on the upside, you don't need to outperform the market, you just need to perform with the market. So rather than increase the risk to try and outperform an already hot market, our belief is that most investors should try to reduce risk, buy the best five or six stocks in the industry, hold on for the two or three year time frame, Rule said. From the banks that run the US government's point of view, gold as a rival to the dollar must be quashed. And the primary purpose of futures options and forwards is to expand artificial supply to keep the price from rising. On a broader context, the ability to print synthetic commodities out of thin air is a means of suppressing prices generally, and we must not be distracted by claims that derivatives improve liquidity, they only improve liquidity at lower prices. When the dollar price of gold found a significant turning point on 17 December 2015, open interest on COMEX stood at 393,000 contacts. The year-end figure today is nearly double that at 786,422 contracts, representing an increase of paper supply equivalent to 1,224 tons. But that is not all. Not only are there other regulated derivative exchanges with gold contracts, but also there are unregulated over-the-counter markets. According to the Bank for International Settlements, from N2015 in regulated OTC contracts principally London forward contracts expanded by the equivalent of 2,450 tons by last June, taken at contemporary prices. And we must not forget the unknown quantity of bank liabilities to customers' unallocated accounts which probably involve an additional few thousand tons. They are trapped, just as much as the Fed via the dollar and geopolitical. If we continue or escalate with Iran, sales go up in gold. If they pump out too many open contracts, it looks too fishy. They are failing since the start of 2019 and can't keep it down, woohoo. They can still smack gold and silver around like a bad puppy in just about every exchange, though. But it doesn't seem it's working as well, or as long, as it used to. But I'll never cease to be amazed over what some people can do with a printing press. Blue light special today, keep stacking. But only physical gold, not GLD. Physical gold, yes. Physical silver, yes. Proven historical assets to preserve your wealth. So how reliable are GLDs holding? GLD does not give retail investors the right to redeem for any of its mystery physical gold holdings. This fact alone ensures the GLD shares to be nothing more than paper at the end of the day. GLD also has a glaring audit loophole in their prospectus that states they have no right to audit sub-custodian gold holdings. To this day, I have not heard of a single good reason for the existence of this back door to the fund. I remember there was a highly publicized visit by CNBC's Bob Pisani to GLD's Gold Vault. This visit was organized by GLD's management to prove the existence of GLD's gold, but the gold bar held up by Mr. Pisani had the serial number ZJ6752, which did not appear on the most recent bar list at that time. It was later discovered that this GLD bar was actually owned by ETF Securities. Also, they are not at all straightforward about GLD's insurance. Their representatives will not confirm nor deny the existence of GLD's insurance. I recommend anyone curious about this to confirm via calling GLD's publicly listed number for general inquiries and ask about this clause from the GLD prospectus. The custodian maintains insurance with regard to its business on such terms and conditions as it considers appropriate, which does not cover the full amount of gold held in custody. Exactly how much of the fund is insured? 
They will not give you a straight answer and might even throw in some bizarre excuse, which I have experienced. Why hide this information from investors? The people behind GLD certainly do not seem like the most honest types. The value of ETF bullion tops $100 billion for the first time in five years. I think we'll learn some things during the next liquidity problem, when the supply can't meet the demand. About five years ago or so, the German government asked for the gold they had on deposit at the Fed. They were told that they could come and look at it, but it would take seven years to get it back to them. You see, the Fed does what all banks do, they lend out deposits in their custody to earn a return, and they had pledged this gold and could not immediately return it to the owners Germany. That is when I learned of the concept of notional gold. There could be a time where a premium would be paid for gold one could actually get their hands on versus notional or paper gold. I didn't like the idea of notional or paper gold. The price of gold can be allowed to rise without causing problems for the central bankers. However, any rise must be controlled to maintain fiat currency stability. I believe the central banks is sell to suppress any wild spikes in precious metals then repurchase on the dips. This strategy has been immensely successful and profitable for the central banks and the precious metals exchanges. Small private holders of precious metals have been cheated out of profit and opportunity to the extent that holding physical for investment purposes is probably for most a loss when inflation and opportunity losses are accounted for. Precious metals still make some sense from a long-term insurance policy perspective, but governments can effectively outlaw private ownership or tax it out of existence whenever it pleases. And the majority who don't own it won't give a hoot. Anyway, I'm seeing China and Russia stacking tons of gold. Why? I believe they're sick of the US effing with their banking transactions and settlements. My bet is they will soon come out with a new gold-backed currency as an alternative to an increasingly fiat US dollar. Or something like that. These countries are getting sick of the US sanction thing screwing with their trade and their economy. Why else would these countries be hoarding this much gold? One of these days, it will be China or Russia, setting the daily price of gold. As soon as they've loaded up with as much physical as can be found, they will crack the fake paper gold market wide open. Of course, the US government will still be claiming to hold some physical, but it will be 50 years since the last real audit. Nobody believes they still have 10,000 tons of it. I bet they don't even have 1,000 tons left. COMEX gold price up 18.8% .8 in 2019. COMEX gold total contract open interest up 335,062 contracts or 74.2%. When the COMEX gets called out on its fake paper gold printing, gold will soar. Will that happen in my lifetime? Who knows? This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.